friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave, and today I'm gonna to be giving you the top three reasons why the wet on wet technique may be a struggle and may not be working for you. So let's jump right in and start. So today we are talking about the top three reasons why the wet on wet technique may not be working for you. Okay, so I have three reasons of why it's a bit of a struggle and that's what I'm gonna go through today. And my first reason is paper. Paper is huge when it comes to the wet on wet technique. You wanna make sure you have the right paper. The thing is, if you're just starting out and you wanna get really, really cheap supplies, something super affordable, um, you may not have the best paper for this. So when you're starting out and you're following a tutorial and I say we're gonna do some wet on wet here and it doesn't work out, this may be why. Does that mean you need to go out and buy really expensive materials right now? No, I started off with really cheap inexpensive paper and you know it was fine for a while and then once I fell in love with it, I was able to upgrade, but I just wanna make sure you guys know that this is the reason why it may not be working for you, not necessarily your skill. So the first one is paper, and I'm gonna show you why. So this is 100% cotton cold press paper, which is ideal for the wet on wet technique. This is inexpensive. I believe this is artist loft paper, which is like the cheapest paper I could find at Michael's. It's super thin. It's marketed as watercolor paper, cold pressed, but it does not feel the same. If you could feel, I don't even know if you can tell the difference. This is thicker and it has texture to it. If you guys can see that. This is what you want in a nice high quality watercolor paper is some tooth and texture, especially for the wet on wet technique. This smoothness is not gonna help you in that. So on another note, what you wanna look for is cold press paper. There are high quality watercolor papers um, that are 100% cotton that are hot pressed, which means they are smoother. Those are also not ideal for the wet on wet technique. So when doing the wet on wet technique, you want something that's cold pressed, has some texture and is 100% cotton. So now I'm gonna stop jabbing, <laughs> jibber jabbing, and I'm gonna show you the difference of why this is a big deal, okay. So for the wet on wet technique, you could either start with a light wash of a color or just water itself. And what you're looking for is, so I'm just gonna wet it up, a really nice bloom. Let's get purple because it's nice and dark. You want that really nice explosion because what you get with the wet on wet technique are really nice soft blends and bleeds. Um, you can use it for out of focus backgrounds. Um, when you want two colors to kind of blend into each other seamlessly, it's really nice to use the wet on wet technique. If you're creating shadows, um, it's a great technique to use, but it needs to be done properly and with the right materials. So see, you can just keep adding some darker colors. I'll even show you with like a darker color. Say I was doing a shadow, so here's some Payne's gray and I just wanted to deepen this a bit. Having that wet on wet is gonna have that nice seamless blend when you finish. Okay, so this is kind of what you're looking for. Now I'm gonna show you on the cheaper paper. Oops. It's okay if you do it with a light wash too, it might be actually easier for you to see. And you can really tell the difference of a cheaper paper or even a hot press paper because it feels a lot smoother. Hot press paper is not cheap paper. It is high quality paper, but it's used for other things. It is not ideal for something like the wet on wet technique. So I just wanna make that clear. Okay, so here let's get, you still, mm. so you still get that bloom, but see how it all kind of goes to one side. See how it kind of just starts to move around? It doesn't disperse evenly. It went that way and then went that way. That's because the water is not soaking into the paper as well as it is here. And it's kind of creating this puddle on top. It's harder for 
the water to soak in. So it just sits on top and then it doesn't move the way it's supposed to. So once we, <clears throat> so once we see how these dry, you're gonna see a huge difference. Let me add some of the darker color to show you. It still disperses kind of funky and nice, but it's not gonna be the same, especially if you're trying to get a nice seamless blend. So I don't know if you can see this, but see how the darker Payne's Gray that I'm putting on is just sitting there? It's because that water has not soaked into the paper. It's not as absorbent. The cotton in the 100% cotton paper really helps it to soak in, while a cellulose paper or a really cheap paper um, will just have it sitting on top. So you're gonna see what it looks like when they're both dry and you'll see the difference. <laughs> Okay, so it's not fully dry, but you can definitely see there's a difference. This doesn't look bad. It kind of has like an abstract quality to it, which is actually great if you're doing some abstract work. But if you're looking to have those nice seamless blends going from one color to the next, or it kind of fading to like a soft blend, you can definitely see that the 100% cotton paper is way better. With the non-cotton paper, you're gonna get these blooms and these marks, which are not ideal when you're looking for this. So the first problem is your paper. So now I'm just gonna put this over to the side because there are other reasons of why it may not be working, even if you have great quality paper. And the first reason is too much water. So I'm gonna put down, let's just do a base of a color first so you can see, way too much water. And what I mean by this is that if you were to tilt it to the side, there's gonna be a puddle okay so here's my water I'm gonna tilt it to the side see how it's all pooling in one area I'm gonna show you what happens when we try to add some wet on wet color to that okay it looks different and it will stay in that one spot instead of spreading over the whole area it stays in that one spot and it just sits in that pool so when it looks so when it dries, it won't disperse nicely. It will just sit there and then you get those weird watercolor blooms. So another instance of this happening is say we're doing a leaf, okay? This is an example of when I use wet on wet sometimes. Okay, say we're doing a leaf and sometimes there's more water in one area than the other. And I do have tips on how to fix that. You can either take your paper towel and just make sure that there's no puddles or you can dry off your brush and pick it up. But sometimes there are puddles, okay? And so say there's that little puddle sitting in one area and then what I ask you to do sometimes is go back in with a darker green to add a bit more of that shadow, okay? And it will just sit there. And that's not what we want. I'll show you what we want ideally. Okay, we have our green here. Here's our other leaf. Okay, we wanna make sure that that water is dispersed evenly. Okay, if you were to tilt it, there wouldn't be any puddles. So when you go back in, you get that little bit of a color bleed into the base and you can kind of move it around a little bit. As you may notice, the purple dispersed really nice and big. <clears throat> not all colors do that. I'm not sure exactly why they don't do that, um, but I know some colors have that ability to reach further than others. So just keep that in mind. So as you can see, the green didn't go further, but it will still blend nicely when the water is evenly dispersed all over the leaf and there's no puddle rather than this little puddle down here. So you're gonna see once that dries, the difference, okay? And if you want a little bit more um, darker green there you just have to add it another way that we add too much water sometimes so we laid down a really wet leaf with a puddle sometimes the problem also is when you go back in so let's do our leaf again okay so say we put the right amount of water and there's no puddle so see how there's like a tiny little puddle there I'm gonna dry my brush lift it up but it's all the same amount of wetness <laughs> okay and you can tell because if you tilt it to like the light you can see there's a nice light sheen all over and that's kind of what you want now the mistake we can make here is when we go back in with our darker color we have way too much water on our brush and we do that and it just kind of takes over 
Okay, so when you're going back in to add a little bit of like a darker color or something, you wanna make sure that you're adding the same amount of water. I know it's a little tricky to kind of figure out, but try and take some of that pigment, some of that water off your brush. If you're wondering if you have too much, you can always dab it on your paper towel just to take some of that excess water off and excess paint off, and then you can just tap it. This has already started to dry, so that's gonna act differently, but you're gonna see once this dries, you might, even with good quality paper, get a bit of a bloom because there's more water in this area than there is on the rest of the leaf. But you will definitely see a difference between the two of them. So sometimes also, we may not put too much color, but we may just like put a lot of water. And then you're gonna see a bloom from that too. All right, so watch. Watch how these dry and you will definitely see the difference. Okay, and then the last one is not having enough water. So I find this happens right when we start painting with a dry brush. So I'm gonna have a fresh dry brush that I haven't used. And before you start painting, you really wanna soak up those bristles. Dipping it once into your water like this is not gonna be enough, okay? So say I'm, I'm putting it all around and I dip it and I go into my color and then I try and do the wet on wet and it's not going anywhere. It's cause there's not enough water. If you touch it, it's wet, but it's not enough. Okay. You really want to soak your brush before you start painting, get it nice and wet. And like I said, you want to look for that sheen. Okay. So if you were to tilt after you do your wet on wet, whether it's a sky, whether it's a leaf or whatever, take your paper, tilt it, Check if there's a little pool of water. If there is, just dry off your brush and you can just move it around a bit or you can take your paper towel and dab it. But what you want ideally is this sheen. See how it's dispersed evenly all over? Cause then that's where you're gonna get what you want. Let's do a different green, I don't know. Okay. So. I'm trying not to add too much water and pigment on my brush. I might take some off and then dab it, go around like that. And if I notice that it's not um, spreading the way I want it to, I can always dry off my brush a bit and just kind of move it around. But the proper wet on wet is gonna give you a nice seam seamless blend when it dries. Okay, so if you already look at this one, it dried the fastest because there was not a big puddle of water on it. Okay, this one is still even wet, but you can see there's a bit of a dark shadow here, nicely and evenly blending in to the rest of the leaf. And that's what you're kind of looking for, okay? So those are the top three reasons why wet on wet technique may not be working for you and you may be struggling. So keep those little tips in mind and I hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.